entire time that I've lived here in my cabin, I've used this Yeti cooler as my means of refrigeration. And it has worked well for me for the past two years. And as you can see, I've used it quite a bit for years prior. Um, I used to overland and this has been all over the country and I could go on and on about how much I love this cooler. But today I'm talking about how it's worked for me as a refrigerator and what my plans are going forward. I should address why I'm using the Yeti cooler to begin with, especially considering that I have four chest freezers in my pantry. The question often comes up, why don't I also have a refrigerator? Well, there's a couple reasons for that. One is, is that I don't really want appliances. When things break down in this part of Alaska, there's not really a way of recycling them. And I understand that I could take that old appliance and give it a new use by turning it into storage, say for root crops, if I were to put a vent in it, or I could, um, you know, turn it into a worm bin or something like that. However, I'm not really interested in doing that. And I don't want a bunch of old appliances sitting around on my property. To me, that's an eyesore that I'd rather not have. The other reason is, is that the electricity cost here in this part of Alaska, and maybe throughout Alaska, I don't know, but at least here, the utility cost is 23 cents a kilowatt hour for electricity. And that's double what I was paying in Colorado. Now I just did a Google search and according to that, it appears that 23 cents a kilowatt hour is the national average. Regardless though, I think that's quite costly and it's one that my pocketbook uh, doesn't really like. So if I could reduce the dependency on the grid and reduce my outgoing cost on electricity, it's all the better. So hence why I'm using low tech items as opposed to moving towards a modern refrigerator. But let's talk about what my issue is with this Yeti cooler. Um, so I use these ice blocks that I get from Bass Pro. I either use a five pound ice block or I use this 10 pound one here. And as you can see by the inside of the cooler, this ice blocks is not sitting directly against the items in the cooler. Regardless though, things like these carrots have frozen. These are just ice. And when they thaw out, they're going to rapidly turn to mush. They're not going to be edible or palatable and they're going to rot quite quickly. I also have a couple of eggs in here and I guarantee you these eggs have frozen as well. And that's not good. I mean, frozen eggs are fine. I have frozen eggs in the past, but when you want like a sunny side up egg, it doesn't really work. The whites turn rubbery. They don't actually cook as well. So not a fan of it freezing my fresh produce or my eggs when that was not my intention. And the other thing is anything that's sitting on the floor of the cooler also freezes. So this carton of cream has about uh, half of it left in it and it's frozen, which means I couldn't have cream in my coffee this morning. And yeah, I could use powdered creamer, but I prefer to have fresh cream in my coffee. So this is disappointing. So, and that's what my issue is with the Yeti, is that it is hard to regulate the temperature in here. And anything that I put in here runs the risk of freezing. And I can do without that. So what are my plans for refrigeration going forward? Well, join me over here and I'll show you. So my solution to the Yeti is this. It's a replica ice box. Now I understand that this is a replica and not an original ice box, meaning that it was never intended for refrigeration. However, um, there is a 
way where I can turn this into a true ice box. If you look inside, you'll see that it's silver on the inside. That I did. I spray painted the inside of this with some silver spray paint to kind of help give it that look. Also to kind of seal the wood a little bit. Um, and, but this is what it looked like when I originally purchased it. It was just in this oak finish. However, because I do plan on turning this into an ice box, I'll be sealing the inside of it with Flex Seal. This is a liquid rubber uh, coating that I'll be painting on, on the interior of this cabinet. And then on top of that rubberized seal, well, maybe I should explain why I'm doing this also. This is because when you use an ice box and your ice begins to melt, it whether I'm using those ice blocks like I do, or using ice, you're going to get condensation. And to prevent that condensation from seeping into the wood or running down and uh, going in between the joints, I'm going to seal them off so that condensation has less chance of getting into the wood and rotting the wood out. Um, and then after I do that, I'll be insulating the inside of this. Now, I did run a test on this cabinet here using some insulation just to see how well it would hold the heat. On this particular cabinet, I put in four layers of Reflectix all sandwiched together and ran those on three sides. So bottom, back and top. And then on this side, I have two inches of styrofoam insulation that is lined with the silver backer. And then I put a couple layers of the Reflectix on the door. And then I sealed all of that with some aluminum tape. And what I found by doing that was that by putting in an ice block, whether it was a five pound or the 10 pound ice block, in these hot days of summer, it lasted about 12 hours. After 12 hours, the ice was completely melted and the temperature would come up above 40 degrees. So my plan is, as I mentioned, seal off this cabinet here and this cabinet here with the flex seal and a layer of two inch insulation all the way around and on the door as well. Seal those also with the aluminum tape and see how well it works after that. Now I'm only doing two of the cabinets and not all three because each one of these cabinets is going to serve its own purpose. This one being one of the smaller cabinets I'm going to use for cold items such as cream and cheese. And then this taller cabinet, I will be putting some stackable bins in here. And in this cabinet, I will be storing some fresh produce over the summer months. And then also any condiments like jelly and things like that, that I might have. So that's why these two are going to get sealed and insulated because they're going to have ice in these to keep these two components cold. This lower cabinet down here, however, this one I'll just be using to store root crops um, over the summer months or shoulder months uh, because remember I have that big cellar downstairs where most of my root crops will be stored in the winter months. So I'm going to go ahead and get busy on reconstructing this um, into an antique style icebox and I'm going to bring you along and show you exactly all the challenges that I encounter as I go about it and I'm going to be giving it a facelift too. The first thing that I need to do is I need to remove the construction that I've already I've done for my test run. And so I'm going to go ahead and remove all of this foil tape and the insulation that I put in here. And then after that, I'm going to take off all the doors and the hardware. One of the very first issues that I'm having is this corner right here. As you can see, it's not flush against this piece of wood. So I need to tighten this up to these two pieces of wood before applying my flex seal. Now I'm just gonna take some finished nails and I'm going to just tack this piece in and use these nails to hold the backer board on more uh, securely than it is right now. And I know where my center line is because there's a screw up top and a screw at the bottom. And so I have visually uh, just gauged where 
I'm at between the two of those. Now I could use a plumb line and do it better, but I'm just gonna go ahead and hammer these in and get that to basically suck itself in against that center support and the shelf in there. Even though I went ahead and got that back tightened up against that center support, I still want to do something else before applying the flex seal to ensure that condensation isn't gonna be able to run down those sides and into the lower cabinet. So I'm gonna use some aluminum foil tape. This is the same tape that you would use on ductwork. And I'm gonna just tape around all the edges and get that sealed up nice and tight before painting on that flex seal. It's going to be 24 hours that that flex seal needs to dry, so I'll check back in with you tomorrow. One eternity later. Yes, it has been three months since I started working on this. I thought I could get this taken care of before everyone showed up for their summer visits, but I was kidding myself when I thought that uh, because I started it right before everyone was expected to arrive. But here I am at this point where I need to get this finished because I have other projects that I need to tend to too. And getting this one out of the way will just help to make some room for the other things I need to do. So speaking of getting this out of the way, I've now moved it into this corner by the front door because this is the coldest part of the main floor of the cabin. It's the furthest away from the wood stove as well as the oil heater. But what I need to do now is I need to begin insulating this. So I've already gone ahead and taken some preliminary measures of the top and bottom of both of these two chambers here. And I'm gonna go ahead and cut some um, insulation that I'm gonna tuck up in there. And then I'll do the same thing for the sides and the back and then bring you along for the next steps. This was my first time using the electric foam cutter. It's a hot blade that will basically melt its way through the foam. Uh, but as you can see, I didn't do a perfect job, but I believe that this is going to work. I did have to trim down a little bit as I went along, but now this should slide up in perfectly. And it'll sit up in there and uh, stay tight and then I'll do the same thing for the bottom and for all the sides. So once I get this all insulated, I'll bring you along and like I said, show you what comes next. <music> in place now uh, and before I go any further with the inside of the cabinets I am going to go ahead and sand this down and prep it for refinishing the outside of it but I do want to say two things one using the hot knife made cutting the foam so much easier than the way I cut the foam for the windows um, and as you can see by this piece here the more I did the better I got at it so less jagged pieces 
Um, but I do have the upstairs windows open and I have the back door open. So don't worry, there's plenty of ventilation in here because this does smoke, as you're probably seeing floating in the air right now, and create some fumes. So I have plenty of ventilation going on. But now to work on the outside of the ice box. So I've already taken all the door hardware off and set that aside. What I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna sand down the exterior of this just ever so lightly. I'm not doing a deep, deep taking it down to bare wood. I just need to remove the uh, polyurethane or whatever sealer is on here because I'm going to be applying a gel stain to this. Well, what do you think? It's beautiful, right? It didn't quite turn out exactly like I had hoped. I actually used two different kinds of gel stain on this. Well, two different colors of gel stain, I should say. The first one that I did was Kona, and it turned out lovely. But I wanted to bring out a little bit of red in it. And so I went back over with the second coat in mahogany. That lightened it up quite a bit. So if I were to do this again, I would just stick with the Kona. It gave it a nice dark finish, which is what I prefer. But nonetheless, I'm really pleased with how the exterior of it turned out. And there were some things I did off camera to finish out the inside. So one of the very first things that I did, as I showed you, was I lined the inside of it with two inch thick uh, foam insulation. Now I used high density foam and what I found was on the exterior walls, I didn't have quite that much room to play with. And so I wound up replacing that with a one inch high density foam instead. Because as I mentioned, I will be putting some bins in here and those bins have already been purchased and they fit exactly um, inside the door frame. But with that extra space being taken up by the two inch foam, that wasn't gonna work. The next problem that I ran into was that on the center of divider that divides the tall cabinet from the two shorter ones, there's no play in that one. There's not a lip at all. It's just a solid piece of wood right there. And so what I wound up doing was putting a piece of reflective uh, foam, well, it's like bubble wrap insulation. It's not Reflectix though, but similar. I put that next to the wood and then I covered that with the piece of cardboard to give it a smoother finish. I did then line everything with the same silver metallic tape, the same tape that's used for ductwork. I'm sorry, I don't really know what that tape is called, but I lined all the edges with that again and then I went in and I wallpapered the inside of the cabinet. Now I do recommend using wallpaper and not shelf liner like I did. What I used was shelf liner. It's too thin and I don't think it's going to hold up. It looks nice, but I don't think it'll last. Um, and I went ahead and I also insulated the doors. So here's what the inside of it looks like. As you can see, I also have two inch high density foam on the doors and I use silicone to attach that. The silicone um, really worked well for securing the foam to the doors and then also for securing the edges of the shelf liner to the flex seal. The flex seal will not allow any adhesion of almost anything but the silicone worked out great. The one thing that I did when I wallpapered the inside of this is I started with the back and I left an overlap on all the edges and I took the corners and folded them up so that if any moisture were to run down the back of the uh, unit here, it would just roll right then onto the sides and the bottom where it could easily be cleaned up. When I lined the sides of the cabinets, I made sure that my seam was in the middle of the top. That way, again, as any condensation builds inside the cabinet, it doesn't have a seam in the bottom which to run under because water will find its way through the smallest of openings. So this way all the condensation can be contained. And what I've also done here is I've lined the bottom of it with a tea towel because as I've mentioned, you will still receive condensation in this as your ice starts to thaw out, whether it's 
ice that you pull out of your freezer or it's an ice block like what I'm using. And I do have a 10 pound ice block in this particular chamber and it appears to be too much ice for this small area because this cream did freeze overnight. Now the cranberry juice that I have stored in here did not. So that's good, but I think going forward, I'll just put a five pound ice block in there, similar to what I have in the taller unit here. So in the taller chamber, you can see that I have two five pound ice blocks, and you can see that a bit of frost has built up on this one. But despite these only being a couple inches away from the, uh, the items that I have contained on the top bin, nothing here has frozen so it's only in that smaller compartment that i had an issue and one other thing is i've had the refrigerator thermometer in here and you can see hopefully you can see that i can't see the screen but you can see that it's about 35 degrees in here which is ideal for refrigeration so everything seems to be doing well in here and i could not be happier with this now these bins I picked up at Fred Meyers and as you can see, they are stackable and they fit in here perfectly. But as I mentioned, some things to keep in mind if you plan on doing something similar is use some silicone if you need to adhere anything to the flex seal and use heavier duty, heavy duty wallpaper, uh, like pill and stick wallpaper um, that's like a vinyl, I think would work out much better for this. So I might actually wind up redoing the inside because as I mentioned I don't think the shelf liner that I purchased is going to last um, and then again I did not do anything special in the bottom chamber if I reline this I might actually line the inside of this just in case there is anything that spoils in here I can wipe it up easily and this is yet to be sealed I still have to seal this um, so I'll be doing that uh, sometime soon but I am really, really pleased with how this turned out and I think it's gonna last me for a very long time. So uh, let's talk about some other things that have been going on around the cabin. For one is the other day when I was out and about with Kenai and I pulled off to the side of the road to let him uh, do his thing, I was hearing this noise and I could not for the life of me figure out what the noise was. But it turned out that it was the ice speaking so not only does the ice in here speak volumes, but the ice on the lake was making the most phenomenal noise. Like I said, I'm always learning something around here, always. But this week I only received one package in the mail and that was from Original Six and she sent me a huge assortment of caramels. So thank you for that, Tiff. I really, really appreciate it. And this will keep me uh, in heaven throughout these cold winter months. Oh, I almost forgot. I will be doing a live stream again this coming Tuesday, October 7th. But if you're impatient and you'd like to watch some other live streams or join in on a few, then I highly recommend that you go over and check out Rob and Sarah at the Cremudge Inn as they have a live stream every Monday night at 4 p.m. Alaska Standard Time. Theirs is immediately followed by Happy Hour over at Alaska Cut the Cord at 5.45 p.m. Monday nights. So they have one coming up this week. They'll have one the Monday right before mine. And there is also Bill over at Alaska's Last Frontier Homestead who hosts a live stream every Wednesday night at 5 p.m. So there's a few options for you, but I'm hoping to get some other people to start doing live streams also. Mountain Mariner, John in Alaska, I'm looking at you guys. Just kidding. Anytime you want, I'll be there. But in the meantime, enjoy these outtakes and I'll see you again next week. Please stay safe and take care until then. <clears throat> so it was my first time using the hot, uh, what is it? The hot blade.
my first time using a foam hot blade to cut it was my first time using a hot foam cutter. What is this thing called? Electric foam cutter. So this was my first time using the electric foam cutter. It, I did line everything with the, um, I did line everything with the same, um, It never tears easily. Always. I don't know if you can see that. What I think I'll do in the future is only put in a five pound ice block and then I'll store it on top of the bin, much like I have here in the taller chamber. Oh, shoot. I want the door to burn and scrap that back in. Would help if I put them back after moving the ice chest. In the taller unit that I have two of the five pound ice blocks and you can see there's a bit of frost that's built up on this one but nothing in here has frozen despite being Ooh. This will be remedied going forward. 